Good morning. Um, welcome to this vlog. Um, we're out in the garden today and I'm going to do a vlog on Galley Box Mark 1. Many of you have been following it on Facebook. It's my first attempt at getting a galley box for Arwen to store about two or three days worth of food. So I thought um, I'd go through it, show you how I constructed it, and also um, set it up for the very first test. Okay, here we go then. This is the galley box. The dimensions, it's about 39 centimetres by 35 centimetres, and it's got a height of around about 31 centimetres. I took those measurements so that I could fit it into a space in Arwen um, where it would slot in and not rattle around. The lid is held in place by two straps which we can release uh, very quickly now. The lid acts as a tray and if we take the lid off it's fairly stiff. I've deliberately made it as tight as possible. Um, there we have the lid and I have a heat proof mat which can go in the actual lid as well so I can rest the pots and pans in it. So this is now looking inside it or four main compartments. Um, this compartment here contains bottles, um, uh, the tall stuff. In here we have um, all the food. So if I lift this one out, I've got, I've got plenty of space here for tins and packets and things like that. And then if I very quickly lift this one out, you can see that there's another section below which also contains enough space for um, a day or two's meals. I'm estimating at the moment that I can get around about three days worth of food in here um, for a three day trip, perfect. This is the actual cooking compartment where the stove will go and I use a Trangia stove which I'll talk a little bit about in a few minutes. Inside is lined with some aluminium sheet that I had left over from another project. The doors are held, two doors, so that I can access one side or another. Um, more easily and they're held in place by brass turnbuckles. So if I very quickly just turn those so that we can remove the doors, we can have a closer look inside. Okay, we have there revealed two bottom compartments. In this bottom compartment, if I just take things out for a moment or two, I store washing up liquid, matches, um, some wet wipes. I've also got in here uh, tissues, sponges, um, waste bags, things like that. So it's the cleaning utensils. So that's the main dimensions of the box. You can see that I constructed it on um, a base with four sides and the way I did this was that I actually put the sides in place stuck onto the actual side struts and then I assembled it um, back two sides, middle piece, middle back piece, and then inserted the floors. And you can see more about that on the actual block. It's got two substantial handles, glued and screwed on the side, so it will take a fair weight. And this tray will act as a place on which I can put pots and pans. In the bottom compartment, I've got a mug, I've got uh, bowls, not that I need them because they're already in there, uh, already in the saucepans and I've also got that. This is the main cooking compartment in which the Trangia stove sits and once that's up you'll see that it's quite firmly held in place by these two um, or three bits of wood. That's the overview of the box itself so what I need to do now is to set up the stove very quickly and get it going alight so that you can see how that works. And what we'll do is we will boil some water, just as the quick first demonstration of the stove. Okay, here we have the Trangio stove. Uh, this Trangio stove is nearly 40 years old. Uh, Swedish made, it burns methylated spirits in a little burner unit, which is this one here. And it's never ever failed me. I am very, very sentimentally attached to uh, this stove. It comes with a base unit and the way this works is the base unit sits in there and the air holes face outwards so that we get uh, that airflow into that unit there. That's the windshield that sits just on top there. This is the little burner unit into which we will put some meths. 
The meths bottle is carried in a separate fuel locker on board Arwen. Um, one of the things that many people said in Facebook comments about this was do not mix fuel and water in the same box, and I thoroughly agree with that. Pop that inside into the burner unit. Um, in true Blue Peter fashion, um, here's a kettle of water that I prepared earlier, and I tend to use the Bryant and May uh, long matches. Um, it just makes it easier to light. So, into the flame, pop the kettle on top, and that should be ready to go in three or four minutes' time. In the meantime, what we need to do is, because this is the first test burn, is to just check that there is enough air around here that the heat isn't going to be affecting the sides and they're held on with a sort of an epoxy based glue and I'm hoping that we shouldn't have any problems there. So, give it a couple of minutes and let's see what happens. Well, with a bit of luck you can see, two minutes in, we have now got our boiling water and if we just place that on the lid there on the cork mat um, there's the issue with the Tramgeer stove right, is um, that naked flame blowing like that I feel the actual warmth of the wind shield, um, it's not too bad. Um, the sides aren't too bad, they seem to be pretty cool, so there seems to be pretty a uh, pretty uh, good amount of space around there um, insulating it and so that we don't feel the heat effects. You take that and put it out, you lift that off, and you very quickly put that on. And there we go. Um, flame out. It should be stable enough that it won't tip over in gentle waves. So we'll just have a demonstration of that. Um, that stove is fairly well based in there. It's not sliding around. Um, and if we put the windshield back on, just to demonstrate that again, and if we put the kettle with the water back in, just to demonstrate, just to demonstrate that, um, even with that extra weight on, it's still um, pretty um, stable. All right, so gentle waves. I mean, you know, if it was a bit rough, you wouldn't be cooking, would you? So I'm hoping that works. Now I'm hoping that with this stove, um, I can hove to in gentlish conditions and actually make um, a little pot of tea while I'm at sea. So, there we have it, uh, the first testing of the stove, and so far, so good, nothing seems to have separated. Admittedly, that was a very quick demonstration, um, three or four minutes worth of heating to get the boiling water. How it would work with heating for about 10, 12 minutes, well that would be the next test uh, I'll do in a, in a week or so's time. Um, I'll actually cook a meal and see what happens, but that seems to be pretty cool. Very rapid cooling on that, and certainly the metal around the sides is still very, very cool as well. So I'm quite pleased with that. Organisation-wise, this is much better. Everything goes onto the one tray, which will be alongside the box in Arwen on, on the side thwart. Um, I can find where I need it. I've got cork heat-proof mats, uh, which just slot into the very back of the um, box there and it makes such a difference because in the past I've had pots and pans all over the place. I designed this deliberately with um, a deepish rim so that things sort of don't slide off it. It's actually made out of 5.5mm um, ply. I used ordinary ply, not marine ply. The paint finish is International Paints. What I have first is an aluminium primer coat um, aluminium flake primer coat and there's three coats of that coats of pre-coat on um, primer on top of that and then there are three coats of international top black white there were one or two issues um, clearly painting the doors made them slightly wider and I've had to scrape off paint on the sides there 
Um, hence, I always put the aluminium flake paint on. Uh, that's the absolute base layer. And I've noticed that in the past on r when where paint has flaked away and scratched, that aluminium base paint has never, ever scratched away, ever. It's never revealed the epoxy underneath, and it's been absolutely bomb-proof. There we go then. Uh, I hope you like the galley box. Um, I will place it into our when in a couple of weeks' time when I go sailing, and I'll quickly film where that is so that you can see it. And when I do my next camping voyage, I will make sure that I film it in action, um, either in Arwen or sat on the beach enjoying myself um, cooking an evening meal. If you like what you see, um, please subscribe. And of course, don't forget there is the actual blog itself, which is www.arwensmeanderings.blogspot.com. Come and join us on our travels. Thanks for watching.